So one of the main parts of the judges section and the rider marks, the, the, the horse's way of going at the bottom of your test sheet is obviously the paces. That's the first mark that the judges come across where they're really take, they've done the sheet and they're thinking about the overall picture. Uh, now, we're going to focus on achieving more jump in the canter because it's so important with a horse as you go up through the levels that you have a good quality active canter and one of the most regular um, comments can often be needs more activity from behind or needs more jump in the canter or needs more push those sorts of comments so we're going to give you um, an exercise that you can work on with your own horse how to achieve that whether you're at prelim or at pre St George. Okay, Charlotte, so what we're going to do is we'll come on to a 20 metre circle to start with, just again in the middle of the school. And we're going to look at how we can influence more jump in the canter. Okay, so just start in a normal working canter on a 20 metre circle. Good. Now, make sure that first and foremost, you are accurate with your circle shape and size. Imagine you are riding a diamond shape, so four points of the circle. And on these four points of the circle, I would like you to try and ride straight lines and turns rather than circles, okay? So physically, turn the shoulders to the next point, okay? So you do this with your outside rein and your outside leg. So you turn your shoulders, you turn his shoulders, that's it, exactly, very good. So what you're doing is you're turning the shoulders around the inside hind leg, which creates a little bit more impulsion. Now, just stimulate him a little bit there in the canter. Use your body language, very good, to create energy, exactly. So these quarterly turns help to keep the horse reacting and listening, essentially. Okay, very nice. Now the other thing you can do is we'll swap our diamond into a square. Okay, so ride again four straight lines and four turns. And on each turn, create energy within a smaller canter. Turn, turn, turn and straight, that's it. And turn, so two or three strides of turning is what you're looking for. Then turn the shoulders, good, energy, and turn the shoulders, very good. Okay, and then when you're ready, we'll go forwards to trot. Just relax the hand a little bit, just think forward in the trot. We'll change the rein with two half 10 meter circles, and we'll do exactly the same on the left side. It's really important that you notice the difference between one side and the other in terms of what he finds easier. And a good thing to do is to take the, feel, the good feeling from the good rein and you put that into the not so good rein. So canter when you're ready on the left side. Lovely, so make it really clear when you're turning and when you're going straight. It's very hard to do in a field or in an open space, but the principles still apply. You can always use cones if you need some guidance. Very nice, good. Okay, that's it, super. So that's one thing that you need to just be aware of. The next, just ride a normal circle once again, okay, is to try to play around with the energy levels in canter. So for two or three strides, just ride in the canter with more oomph, essentially. So what you need to imagine is a bouncing ball, okay? The more you push a ball down, the more it bounces higher. Does that make sense? So use your seat and your leg in the down moment so that he bounces off the floor a little bit more. So you create more rhythm with your body language and with your seat. So bounce, 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 bounce. That's it. And now ride forward once again. Just working canter, very nice. And now show that once again now. So energy, bounce, 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 good. And now forward once again. Make it a little bit more obvious just in your own riding. So show him the energy levels that you want. Good, 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 good. And now forward again, go. Yes, that's it. 
And we'll do that transition once again so that he pushes smoothly from behind rather than tense in his back. So bouncy ball, bounce, 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 and go. Smooth, push. Uphill tendencies, allow with the hand. Lovely. Very good. And then prepare to trot, thinking forwards into the trot transition. Relax your seat, relax your leg. Good. Lovely. Just stay in the working trot. You should find that when you create more energy in the pace in the canter, that should keep that same feeling through into your trot transition as well. Super. Okay, so what we've just done there with Charlotte is discuss two main things really in terms of improving your horse's paces. And that is making sure your horse is straight and in balance. So whether you're on a 20 meter circle or 50 meter circle, you make sure, particularly in the canter, that you're turning the shoulders inside the hind legs. So you ride a diamond or you ride a square and that gives the, makes room for the shoulders and to be in balance and then to have an active hind leg because otherwise the hind legs start to do this. Okay, so you bring the shoulders in front of the hind legs and then the hind leg can come more under. So that's really important really for step one, making sure that the horse actually pushes off both hind legs evenly uh, and is obviously in balance. Now, the other thing to think about in terms of all three paces, whether you're in walk, trot or canter, is a bouncing ball. You create rhythm through your body language with your seat, with your legs and with your upper body and your posture to create more energy. Quite often you tend to get riders that if you say ride with more energy just go a bit more hectic and just oh my gosh I've got to ride with more energy and they do stuff but not really sure what that stuff should be and thinking about rhythmical aids in the time with the horse's rhythm and balance and their natural rhythm most importantly is a great way to keep a horse relaxed but yet be able to create springs with their steps so again all of this is orientated about getting those marks at the bottom of your test sheet higher. And if you can exaggerate in a calm and relaxed way the horse's paces, you're hopefully going to be getting those eights and those 7.5s or even nines rather than those sixes and 6.5s.